God in that first year. I came home, I hurt my knee. Just had a knee operation the other day, the second one. First one was playing basketball 35 years ago. He was Gary Manuel and his brothers, and that's how I hurt my, you know, my leg playing basketball. And <clears throat> man, I, that first year was a flop. They booed me every time I came out of the dugout for all the guys I got. What year are we now? We're 76. 76? Yeah. Mr. Moss and I are uh, roommates in Trois Rivières, Canada, in Double A. Oh, yeah? Yes. Quebec City? No, we're in Three Rivers. Oh, Three Rivers. Quebec yeah, City yeah, is yeah. in our league. Yeah, three we're playing against uh, Dawson and Reigns and Terry Crowley and Juan, Nav Juan Navaretti. Terry Crowley could hit. Yeah. And yeah, they, uh, had some they had a left hander that year that won 20 games in double A. Who's that? You remember his name? Wow. Yeah, so anyway, man. Anyway, I, we got, so check it out. I, got, I was, honestly, I'm going to show the world what I can do. I had a home run my first at bat. I ain't had another home run until like July before. <laughs> They were booing me, man. I had to admit my leg was about to fall off. I was told that it was in my head and not in my leg, and I knew my leg was in serious, serious pain. I couldn't run, and of all the things when I look back on my career big time, the one thing I wish I could do right today, because I signed as a speed guy. Yeah. You're now trying to regroup and oh. uh, settle in as the left fielder for the Dodgers. Oh, yeah. You know, your knee was bothering you? And then I went to the bench, man. They, they put me on the bench, and uh, and they were gonna try to trade me that. When I remember that time, that, that winter, we all had operations. We got Reggie Smith. We got Reggie Smith that summer. So it was Reggie shoulder. Bill Russell's finger got crushed on a bunt. Uh, okay, wait. I'm gonna have to have a timeout on that. Why? Well, Bill Russell's finger. He swung at a. 91 mile an hour running fastball from you in, into riverfront. That was me. I did that to him. That's a, I felt bad about it. I swung at it. I swung at it. Did they call a strike? Yeah. And his, his, finger, come out and his finger was crushed. Mangled. I thought he was buttoned. I remember no, his finger was crushed, man. <laughs> that, was, that was when I was able to get that look from y'all. Yeah, when you threw that ball on me. All right, anyway. Anyway, <laughs> anyway so go ahead. So I got to clear out the facts. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. And Bill Buckner was in there with a bad ankle. No. And uh, so they had to choose between trading Buck and trading me, and, and the Cubs didn't want me, I don't think. And they wanted Buck. No. Um, and uh, in that next year, I trained and trained and trained and trained. And my, uh, this is a turning point. My career is on the, on the, on the line. And uh, I remember uh, Thomas Soto said that I was his left fielder. You know, he said no matter what. And uh, left field was very, it was hard, hard for me to learn how to play. And like I was telling you about these home runs that I was hitting, you know, and then I got the eight ball. No, I had two. I had four, two in American Legion, and that was up in Grass Valley. That's about three thousand feet right above up here. That ball just took off in the woods. Told me, Dad, please, Dad, man, I'd like to move up here. And these home runs, you know. <laughs> so anyway, I got the eight ball. I had six on eight ball, nine, eleven. But then I got to the big leagues. I had seventeen and twenty-one and twenty. I just started getting stronger. So finally, that second year in LA, I had thirty. This is uh, when we went to the World Series, and uh, and after that, you know, you know, they liked me, and you know, they weren't booing anymore. And then I, at the end, they ended up making all, you know, Dodger team. You know, years later, and it just shows you how things can turn around. Just you know, by you know, through performance. And plus, I started working harder. You know, I started lifting. I started because I had to because I, I couldn't run, you know, the same anymore. And then. At the end, it didn't end up too well in L.A. There's a lot of innuendos, a lot of different stuff come out, and uh, you know that was a sad, sad, you know, turning point in my life. And that's when we became teammates, and you know, in San Francisco, I think. Were you in San Francisco in '84? You weren't there yet. No. You, yeah, yeah. No. We became teammates once I came back as a as you was, first you base. Was hit, you was the hitting coach, for yeah. the first base coach. Yeah, first I, and, and see that was a, that was a story, you know. And then at the end, you know, I, I they tried to trade me. I didn't want to get traded. I had a no trade guaranteed contract and they, I got released and then Giants picked me up. I didn't want to go there. At the end of my Dodger time, I'm skipping forward. And then um, <clears throat> they tried to trade me to the A's first and I said no. And then they, um, I ended up having to go to the Giants and I talked to my dad. He goes, son, you know, the only way to prove, you know, your innocence or whatever is for you to get back on the field. 
Frank Robson was coach at the, the manager at the time. And uh, so I came back to the Giants, and then the next spring, I got traded to the A's anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I, remember that. I do remember that. I'm like, wait a minute. I have no trade. I can not say nothing. So I played there two years, and then I was out of the game um, in 87. Um, you know, I had some, uh, a family member, and my brother, who was handling all of our, our investments and things, and things were going sour at that time. Tax laws changed. Um, interest rates were all-time high, 20 21%. Things were... Half of us at our generation were in tax shelters and different things, and yet, so yep. I went back to school. I, I got my my uh, uh, broker's license. I was going to be a stockbroker at '87, and then the stock market crashed. So I was like, "Man, this is not the right time for me to be in this." I was getting divorced. I wanted to come back to Northern California, and um, so I went to Texas with uh, Hank Aaron and Joe Morgan and. Frank Robinson and Kurt Flood and all the guys to try to get minority guys jobs in baseball. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it, you know, which I didn't want. I had a job. And uh, so then there was a, <clears throat> Bob Kennedy says, hey, uh, Dusty, I think you need to, Al, Al, Al Rosen needs to talk to you. He wants to talk to you. I said, about what? He said, about a job. I said, yeah, I don't, I'll talk to him, but I don't, want, I don't want any job. And so, yeah. And so, because, you know, at that time I was a little upset with baseball. And so then uh, Bob Kennedy says, well, Dusty, you don't understand. He goes, uh, <clears throat> I was the same guy that you know, was really pushing the Braves at that time. I didn't know he was third base coach of the Braves, mm -hmm. you know, when I, when I signed in L.A. And he says, uh, I was the guy pushing the Braves to give you this money because I saw your talent and here I am around the second time in your second part of your career because I think you'd be a fine coach. And I didn't even know that he had been partly responsible the first time. And so I was like, man, what's going on here? So my dad, I asked my dad again, I said, Pops, what do you think, man? You think I need to get back into baseball? And he said, son, he said, Lord wouldn't let you met Jim Gilliam and uh, the great uh, Preston Gomez and Daniel Ozark and some of the greats that you've been around. You know, uh, you know Joe Black and all the Dodger guys, Newcomb. And, uh, Campanella without, and and give you the uh, wisdom and knowledge to that you have of the game to take it and run away with it and possess it because it's not yours to possess it's yours to pass on. So I said, okay, Dad, I, maybe. So I went, took my my daughter, my brother took his daughter. We went to Lake Arrowhead um, to just go up there and hang out and meditate, pray a little bit. And so I'm checking in the hotel. So this dude taps me on the shoulder in the back. Bob Lurie. Bob Lurie. Yeah. So I like the owner of the Giants. Who well, I'm trying to make up my mind, should I go to the Giants or back to baseball or not? So I like, hey, Mr. Lurie, what are you doing here? He goes, oh, man, it's my first time ever being here. I said, mine too. And I, and I was like, is this the sign I came up here to see? I ain't been long. I, ain't, I, I had been here long enough to see to get a sign yet. So I go back in the room. I said, Pops, you think, what you think, man? Is this a sign that I see it back in the baseball? And he goes, son. He says, if that's not a sign, you'll never get a sign. And he says, you just don't want to see it. And he says, you need to give yourself, you know, do what the Lord wants you to do. And I said, okay. So I made up my mind. I was getting back into baseball. And that's when I got back as first base coach. I gave myself five years, uh, you know, to either be in a glass out of Rosen. I said, Mr. Rosen, I says, he says, you know, what would you like to do in the game? And they flew me up to San Francisco. So I like to be uh, your assistant. I like to be assistant general manager. He says I have assistant general manager. I said, Who? He said Ralph Nelson. I said okay. He says I think you'd be better suited for the field. So I'm kind of like taking this racially. And he sees my face. I said for the field. What do you mean for the field? He goes you know managing on the field. I said oh really? I said really Mr. Really? He says yeah. He said I've been watching you. I didn't even know Mr. Really. So I've been watching you from Astros and we mm -hmm. played against some of the Yankees. And, mm -hmm. and I was like, huh, okay. So I give myself five years because I'm, I'm the kind of guy that I give orders better than I take them. And so almost five years to the day, um, I was named the manager of the Giants. That's right. And, uh, you know, I thank Bob Kennedy and Al Rosen big time for 
you know, for giving me the opportunity to be in that position. And, and Peter McGowan, at the changing of the guards, you know, give me that opportunity to, you know, okay. to manage. And I remember they, they showed you on a rain delay in Pittsburgh. And, uh, you see, in the playoffs, I think in Cincinnati, you were pitching, and the guy we were watching this year, and uh, I think you, you get one run, and it's like in the second inning, first second, it took you out of the game. Yeah. Huh? You, you, you know the game I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah it was the third game of the playoffs. Yeah. The Pirates. He had, he had Freddie Norman warm up, warming up before I even threw a first pitch. <laughs> Cause I was like, damn, dude, they took him out already. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know the game I'm talking about. Yeah, I didn't even realize that. Oh yeah, you know that's like, and you act like you didn't want to give him the ball. You know, you had that bold little clown hair sticking out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> watch it. <laughs> you want me to tell the truth, buddy? <laughs>